أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All perfect praise is due to Allah the Almighty I testify that none is worthy of worship but Allah and I testify that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his final prophet and messenger May Allah exalt his mention as well as that of his families and all his companions. The series of tafsir, explanation, interpretation of the Quran, needs an introduction before we actually go into the chapters of the Quran and mention the sayings of the scholars with regards to the meaning. Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the Quran as the final divine message from Him Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah Azza wa Jal instilled in the Quran a comprehensive and complete way of life. Allah Azza wa Jal put or covered all aspects of life in the Quran. The Quran, the words of Allah, and this is a very important phrase, the words of Allah, which a lot of people don't give heed to. We must always remember and remind ourselves and others that the Quran is a compilation of the words of Allah, the sayings of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that adds to its importance. Allah Azza wa Jal made guidance, reformation, rectification of individuals and nations through the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal covered worldly materialistic aspects in the Quran as well as spiritual aspects as a matter of fact Allah Azza wa Jal called the Quran Ruh Allah says in verse 52 of chapter Ashura وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا which means 
And thus we have revealed to you a ruh. What is the meaning of the word ruh? Ruh means a soul. It means revelation. It means inspiration. It means mercy. Look at these beautiful meanings to the description or that describe the Quran. Just like the body needs a soul to live, the heart needs the Quran to live. It's the life of the heart. A person who does not have Quran in his heart is living with a dead heart. Does not have a soul in it that keeps it alive. Malik ibn Dinar And I want you to listen attentively to the words of the Salaf, the scholars, the early scholars of the Ummah. Because they have pearls of wisdom in them. He said, O oh, people of the Quran, those who recite the Quran or those who memorize the Quran, O oh, people of the Quran, what did the Quran instill in your heart, meaning as a result of your memorization or recitation of the Quran? Then he continued saying, Verily, Quran is the life of the heart, just like water coming from the heavens, meaning rain, give life to plantations. This spiritual aspect of the Qur'an that Allah Azza wa Jal has instilled in it is the reason why a Muslim never feels he had enough. He is never bored reciting the Qur'an and repeating it and finishing the Qur'an, the Mus'haf, the book, and then starting over again. He never feels bored. As a matter of fact, for the companions, it was the sign of the purity of the heart. Uthman radiallahu anhu addressed people saying, Oh people, if your hearts were pure, you will never feel you've had enough from the book of Allah. A sign reflecting the purity of the heart is that you feel eager to recite and continue to recite and start over again and so on. It's a part of your life. You feel you cannot detach, you cannot live without. This reflects that one's heart is pure. Ibn Mas'ud gave us an indication, a scale to weigh things by. He said, you want to know how much you really love Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Then look at your status with the Qur'an. Look, where do you stand from the Qur'an? Do you love it? Do you recite it all the time? Are you eager to hold the Mus'haf and read the words of Allah? The more you do, the more that reflects your sincere and true love to Allah. And the opposite reflects the opposite. It is saddening how some people only talk about the Qur'an when Ramadan starts or a little before it. Inshallah, this year I'm going to recite the Mus'haf during Ramadan. 
Was the Quran revealed to be touched once a year? The words of your Creator are only touched once a year? Is this the status of the Quran in our hearts? Well, that wasn't the case with the companions and the generations who came after them. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Imam al-Tirmidhi and Shaykh al-Albani, rahmatullahi alayhi, may Allah have mercy upon them, ruled it to be authentic. This is narrated by Abu Umama radiallahu anhu. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will never come on the day of judgment with anything better, meaning no deed would be better for you on the day of judgment than the Quran. Reciting it, memorizing it, the best deed to meet Allah Azza wa Jal on the day of judgment with is the Quran. Now the following narration is really different. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us from those who are mentioned in this narration. Allah Azza wa Jal gave those who recite, memorize, learn and teach the Quran a special status. He made them chosen people for his reward, for his support. The Prophet ﷺ, as narrated by Anas, and it's reported by Imam Ahmad and Al-Bayhaqi and Shaykh Al-Albani, ruled it to be authentic. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah has chosen people Allah has chosen people, a special group of people. So people asked, who are these? Define them. The keenness of the companions, radiallahu anhum, to be at the top level. Always let them to question whenever something like this was said. The best deed, the best words, the best people, what, who, how. Because they wanted to obtain that rank, that high rank. They didn't settle for just anything. They wanted to be at the top. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal said, Radiallahu anhum wa radu'an. Allah was pleased with them. And they were pleased with Allah. They accepted anything that came from Allah. So they asked, who are they? Describe, define. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those chosen people, this special group of people, He said, they are the people of the Qur'an. Those who memorize the Qur'an, those who frequently recite the Qur'an, those who study the Qur'an, those who teach the Qur'an, are the chosen people of Allah. Special people, special rank by the virtue of the Qur'an by the virtue of the Book of Allah, reciting, learning, memorizing, teaching, understanding, applying. This makes us worthy of being amongst those mentioned in the narration. Allah Azza wa Jal Revealed the Qur'an for different reasons. 
One, to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and draw near to Him by virtue of reciting it. That's number one. The Prophet Sallallahu this narration is mentioned in the book of Imam Al-Tirmidhi and ruled as authentic by Shaykh Al-Albani. He said, he who recites a letter from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal will get a reward and each reward is multiplied tenfold. Every letter you recite in the Quran, every single letter is multiplied by ten. And there is another narration about the multiplication of rewards. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and it is multiplied 700 multiples. Another reason, the second reason, is to worship Allah and draw near to Allah by virtue of memorizing the Qur'an. As a matter of fact, the Prophet ﷺ told us that the people who memorize the Qur'an will be addressed on the Day of Judgment to recite. They will be told, recite the Qur'an as you used to recite it in the worldly life and escalate in ranks. For your rank in paradise will be with the last verse you recite. You memorize 10 verses, that's 10 ranks. 100, that's 100 and so on. And to stress and emphasize the importance of this Quran, the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Imam al-Tirmidhi and Ahmad and Shaykh al-Arna'ut rahmatullah alayhi ruled it as sound. He said, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the heart that does not have any Qur'an in it, meaning the person who doesn't memorize the Qur'an, is like a ruined, destroyed, destructed house. Can you imagine an airplane dropping a, a two-ton Explosive on a house, what's left in it after that? That's the similitude of the heart of a person who doesn't have any of the Qur'an in it. The third reason why the Qur'an was revealed is that we understand it, reflect and ponder upon it. And number four is to apply it Practically live by it. Let us conclude this session at this point. And we will resume inshallah in the following session. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.